minimum vertex, the x coordinate is going to be what's opposite of what's in the bracket? Negative 2. Good. So opposite is negative 2, and the, w oops, that's not what I meant to do. The y coordinate of my vertex, which is negative 9, what you see is what you get. So if there is a negative 9 over here, there is going to be a negative 9 over here. Okay? So a question like this is worth 1, 2, 3 points for the transformation and a last point for the vertex. Okay? So remember, your x-coordinate of your vertex is always the opposite of what you are given. Okay, before we get to mapping relationships, let's try one more example where you're trying to figure out what the vertex is going to be. So y is equal to negative 9x minus 1 squared plus 4. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's leave that. So 1, 2, 3, plus one more uh, mark for my vertex, which is HK. Okay, what does the negative refer to? Reflection in what axis? Yes, in the x-axis. Reflection in the x-axis. What does the 9 refer to? Oh, silence. <laughs> what does the 9 refer to? Yes. Very good. Vertical stretch by 9. And remember, your graph is getting really, really skinny. If you stretch something, it gets skinny. Uh, what does the brackets refer to? Horizontal shift. What direction am I going? Good. Horizontal shift right by 1. Okay. And what your final mark, first of all, do I have a minimum or a maximum for my vertex? Maximum. Very good. Because when you have a reflection, your graph is going to look like this, a big, sad face and it's going to reach a maximum point, maximum point. So that means I, ha I need to have an x and my y a y coordinate. So my x coordinate is going to come from inside here. So what is my x coordinate going to be? Positive 1. Good, because it's the opposite of what's in the bracket, positive 1. Now, what is my y coordinate of my vertex going to be? Zero. When there's nothing there, it's going to be zero. Very, very good. Now, if I had the equation, for example, the opposite situation, and I had y is equal to x squared plus 9, like that, notice that uh, there is no brackets. There's nothing in the brackets. So in this case, what would my x-coordinate of my vertex be? Zero. And what would the y-coordinate of my vertex be? Yes, positive nine. So I'm throwing a lot of rules at you, but they're very simple rules to understand and to test on your graphing calculator. Unit 10 is really important because the best way to get good at this is practice, practice, practice. Now, um... In grade 11 and a little bit of grade 10, we talk about mapping relationships, which I kind of introduced on schedule days. And what that means is, for example, the parent function of a quadratic graph. Parent function of a quadratic graph, it has some key points in it. I know that the vertex for my parent function is 0, 0. And because I'm talking about the function y is equal to x squared, I know that when x is equal to 1, what is the value of y? What is 1 squared? 1. When x is equal to 2, what is 2 squared? 4. 
When x is equal to negative 1, what is the negative 1 squared? 1. When x is equal to negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4. So these are the main components of my quadratic function. Uh, and I, without even, without drawing it out, if I needed to know what the new transformed function is going to look like, um, I use mapping relationships. And mapping relationships, the proper form for mapping relationships look like this. X and Y refers to your original X and Y, and I'm going to apply my mapping relationship. So maybe I want to apply a vertical stretch. So my X, co my Y coordinates are going to be multiplied by 2 because my Y coordinates are always affected by vertical stretches. Um, the only thing that affects your X coordinates are horizontal shifts. So maybe I want to add 1 to all of my X coordinates. So to do that, we're going to get a new set of points that will be the transformed version of my graph. So all my X coordinates, I'm going to add 1 to them. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 plus 1 is going to give me 0. And negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So these are going to be the new coordinates of my transformed graph that has a horizontal shift. Now, if I want to apply my vertical stretch, I have to multiply all my y coordinates by 2. So 0 times 2 is still 0. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 1 is 2, and 4 times 2 is 8. So now I have 5 points, and I can easily plot my new transformed graph. Okay? So very last thing that I want to kind of show you. If this is my vertex form of the quadratic equation... Anything inside the brackets, that affects my x coordinates. So horizontal shifts always affect your x coordinates. However, anything to do with reflections, vertical stretches, vertical compressions, vertical, if it has the word vertical in front of it, this all affect your y coordinates. So it either means multiplying your y value for when you have your a terms, you have to multiply when it's vertical shifts because we're adding and subtracting, shifting up and down. That's going to, you're going to end up adding and subtracting. You do a lot more with mapping relationships and tables in grade 11, but we give you a slight little introduction to it in grade 10. Okay, does everyone understand all these concepts? I uh, will post the video. After, I'm going to give one more Unit 10 seminar, and when I'm done with that, I'll post this video. Please make sure to watch it before you write your test, because right now I'm pretty sure you're all very confident in the concept. The more time that passes, you're going to forget, okay? Okay, we're done.